walking away with the slippers from your hotel is just not worth living, is it? Right. It's comfort, but comfort is key. Is it ever inappropriate to wear red on a red carpet? No, I don't think anything's inappropriate. If you find your personality dressed to express it, I say. Well, you know, pink is the new black, apparently. He's so cheeky and he's so on it. When I said to Jack, let's get you some a pair of thongs, he goes, no, I'm not wearing that. Girls wear that. Really? Yeah, so I was talking about That's underwear. Stupid. Oh. It's lovely, but it's a bit see-through. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. Welcome to Headbangers Ball MTV four hour metal marathon. Because I've chosen 20 female singers that I really believe have made a great contribution to music. Now, a guy came up to me in a pub sometime in the early 70s and said to me, You know, Thorpey, most people I know think that you're crazy. And I went home and went, Most people I know think that I'm crazy. Originally the song was called Show Pony. Our producer Howard Benson when we were in LA recording the record um, changed the name or he wanted me to change it. We changed the song title from Show Pony to Hold On Me. I don't know why I wanted to do a clip like this, it just seemed like a good idea. I thought of it and luckily Michael wanted to do it and we worked with Michael on hard to follow, he did a good job so here we are again in the 60s. JD was one of the fellas that, um, that auditioned, you know, and I thought right there and then, wow, Keep your eye on this guy, mm. you know. He had mm. a certain way about him and a certain thing, and the whole way along, I don't know, but I, I think we all were looking for that it factor, and I noticed right there that JD had it. But not all of the band members felt the same way. I, I don't like pushy, kind of, sort of forceful people, and JD came across that way in the initial sort of weeks of the series, so I didn't really like him at first, and, uh, it, you know, but he grew on me. Do tell. Yeah. <laughs> I've told him, you know. Days before the Billabong Pro Tahiti 2005 kicked off, Chiapo delivered the biggest and best waves the world had seen in decades, measuring between 10 to 12 feet. During a warm-up session, sports history was made as Kiala Kennelly became the first female surfer to be towed into Chiapo. Everything just felt right, like perfect. And I just pulled into the barrel and was just like, just tried to ride it how I normally ride Chopu. It was just way bigger than anything I'd ever ridden before. I didn't even know how to like express, the, like get the emotion out of my body. I've mainly worked in adult psychiatry and in so doing I've seen some very unwell people emotionally and physically. I blame the world for everything that happened to me. I've got the fabulous life with the husband and we've got the boat and we've got the cars and we've got the stuff and the inside is just dying. I'll get you, get you back, resentment, um, you know, it didn't matter how long it took. Through Brandon's healing she developed two processes. One's called the emotional journey, and one's called the physical journey. And so what happens with the journey process is you go on a journey inside yourself, and you release the stored pain, and then you go through a process of forgiveness so that the body and the being can go about its own process of healing. I've been in recovery nearly seven years, and I've done a lot, a lot of work on myself in, uh, nearly in those six and a half years, but nothing to what the journey did for me in one weekend. Their meaning is as important as, as yours. If I could be the spokesperson for anything, I guess it'd be freedom. <laughs>